right. Hello, everyone. Welcome. You've officially made it to the right place. We'll give just another few seconds so that all the participants can log on here. Got quite a few already, so this is great. But you've welcome. You've made it to the right place. All right. Well, before we let Ohio State pop on and give their presentation, I'm just going to give a few housekeeping things for everyone to know. So I'm Hannah, I'm your facilitator for the day or for the session. And we just wanna welcome you. So welcome to the virtual college exploration for all Ohio students. And this is sponsored by the Ohio Association for College Admissions Counseling and Strive Skin. So we've got a great partnership going for all of these presentations. Thank you for joining us and thank you for taking the time to be with us today. Just a few housekeeping announcements for you before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions into your presenters at any time. Um, I promise they will see your question. Sometimes they might type an answer to you, but sometimes they might wait till the end to answer your question out loud. So just bear with them, be patient. I promise they're seeing your questions. Another housekeeping note is that your camera and your microphone are off. So we cannot see you or hear you, but you should be able to see and hear us, um, me and the presenters. And then I also just want to note that this is just one of the many different sessions that are offered through this great partnership with OACAC and StriveScan. So go ahead and check out the full schedule at OACAC.org. And then all of these are also recorded. So if you missed something that they said today or you don't remember exactly how they explained something, then you can absolutely go back and watch the recording at that same website, OACAC.org. And the recording should be available within a week. And that's about all I have for you. So now I'm going to turn it over to The Ohio State University. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to share my screen. Um, and let me get this started. And then we will begin. All right, I think that looks good. Uh, so thanks again, everyone, for joining. My name is Tracy Schumann, and I serve as Associate Director of Undergraduate Admissions for the Columbus campus of Ohio State. And my colleague Jennifer Fry is the Director of Enrollment Services at the Mansfield Campus of Ohio State. Uh, we will be supported today by Mark Cortez, another colleague of ours. As Hannah mentioned, he will be facilitating and monitoring the Q&A. So at any point that you have questions, please, please use that function. And Mark will either answer it during the presentation or save some for the end, particularly if there are reoccurring questions or ones that we feel are, are valuable to be repeated um, we've done lots of these sessions, so we sort of know, um, you know, where the questions come in. So we want to make sure we cover everything. Um, so as you're wondering, you know, why are there two presenters from Ohio State? And one of the reasons is, is because there are six total campuses of our university. Um, as I mentioned, Jennifer is from the Mansfield campus, uh, one of our regional campuses, but there are a total of five regional campuses of Ohio State. Jennifer will talk broadly about the regional campuses. Um, as well as I will talk broadly about the Columbus campus, providing you examples and information about academics, out of classroom experiences, um, and obviously the admissions process as well. So again, if you have questions, uh, please use the Q&A feature. Um, and again, just so glad to have you all here joining us this evening. And I think it's important to start before our presentation truly begins to really thought, think about where we're at in, in our, the history of our country right now and to share with you some of the values of our university and the efforts and the work that we are doing, particularly for students and people of color in our community. So as members of The Ohio State University, we condemn anti-Black racism and racism in all its forms, and we are committed to engaging interrupting and dismantling institutionalized racist structures. Ohio State's mission to prepare students to be leaders and engage citizens calls us to demand and support change. You can visit go.osu.edu slash addressing racism to learn more about Ohio State's efforts. All right, well, we're gonna go ahead and get started talking about the academic side of the house. No surprise there that we're going to share a lot of great examples about the academics at Ohio State. Some of you may know that Ohio State is one of the largest institutions in the country with over 65,000 students amongst all of our campuses and undergrad, graduate and professional students. We truly are not only a large complex institution, but an academic powerhouse. 
And we don't shy away from sharing that with you because we do feel that our size is one of our great strengths. Um, our size provides you lots of in-classroom and out-of-classroom experiences. Um, and we are also very mindful um, that we want to make sure we're providing students the resources and support to make this large university manageable, that you find the community that you need um, and get all of the, um, the support and community uh, for you to be successful. But from an academic perspective, what are, one thing our size provides us is the opportunity to offer 200 plus majors uh, for you to choose from. We also provide research to all of our undergraduate students. They have that opportunity across all academic fields. And it's truly a commitment by our faculty um, again, as a, as a research institution, a tier one research institution, we are doing research at the highest levels. We are also ranked as a top 20 public institution in the country. So the academic quality and opportunities really exist on our campuses. We also have over 500 majors, I'm sorry, minors, specializations and concentrations to choose from. So it really provides you the opportunity to drill down in great depth and breadth in whatever it is you may want to study. Now, if we were on campus right now, you'd have the opportunity to see a variety of our facilities, whether it's our the great laboratories we have, the creative spaces, our residence halls, the Ohio Union or Thompson Library, some of those great sort of iconic places on our campuses. Um, but unfortunately, since we are not have hosting uh, visitors at this time, I do want to share one of the great examples um, that I feel is, is a is just a, is a great example of how we provide students the resources and tools to be successful. So several years ago, maybe three, four years ago now, we started a partnership with Apple and through our digital flagship initiative, we began offering all new first year students a free iPad Air. Along with that comes the protective case, the smart keyboard and pencil. Um, and we've been training not only our faculty to incorporate that into their lectures, into their classroom and teaching, but also providing students uh, the way to learn how to code or build mobile app designs. And so, as I said, I think this is a great example of the types of tools and resources we give our students to be successful, not only in the physical spaces that we have on our campuses, but also the technology they can really take advantage of, um, you know, when they're when they're doing their work or, or engaged in, in their classroom settings. Now, I think one of the best ways we demonstrate sort of our academic excellence is through our honors and scholars program. You'll see the website that is listed there at the bottom is a great starting point for you to learn mo uh, more about both of those programs. Um, but to give you just a general overview of the differences between the two, the honors program at Ohio State is a very research intensive program. It's more of an academically individualized uh, program in nature where students have the opportunity to take honors designated courses, um, often taught in a smaller classroom setting, maybe 25 students at most, with handpicked faculty who are not only experts in their field, but really chosen because of their commitment to teaching. Um, and students who complete the honors program um, can graduate with honors from Ohio State or with honors research distinction. So again, a, a more of an academic driven program really designed both of these programs for students who are looking for that academically and community enriched program uh, during their time at Ohio State. Students in the honors program are required to live in one of three honors uh, designated residence halls. And so while it's an individual and a very academic in nature, we still want to provide students that community and that support and the ability to live and learn with other students who have similar interests as you. Now the scholars program is a little different. Um, it's more, while academic in nature, it is more co-curricular in nature where students in a, in a cohort are living and learning together outside of the classroom. So there are 17 different programs to choose from and they range from the arts to engineering, leadership, wellness, business, really a little bit of everything. And it's often a way for students to either enhance what they're studying in the classroom in their major or to continue to be a part of something that they have an interest in. Um, and through the scholars program, students may participate in attending workshops, taking a one credit hour class, um, working with faculty in these subject areas, then even some travel opportunities as well. Um, so again, both great programs. Um, and if either of those sound interesting to you, again, I would encourage you to look at the website that's listed 
And know that to be considered, um, you actually have to indicate that on the application when you apply to Ohio State. Um, there will be a question that asks you uh, on the common application if you'd like to be considered. And if you are, what you do then is complete an additional essay. Um, so a little extra work to be considered for one of two great programs. So just be mindful of that. That consideration doesn't happen automatically, but you have to let us know about it. All right, I'm going to turn it over to Jennifer. She's going to talk about some of the out of classroom learning experiences at Ohio State. Great. Thank you, Tracy. Uh, really, at Ohio State University, we provide such a comprehensive world class learning experience that it's really inside outside the classroom and you can make of it what you want. With the university, as Tracy said, with more than 200 majors and those 490 plus specializations, you can explore the different majors and it's okay if you adjust along the way. That's what you have your academic advisors and support team there with you to really identify what the next four years or three years or however long it will be um, in the majors that you choose. And with those, it's a vast opportunity for involvement, right? With study abroad, we go to all seven continents when that is fully in place. We have the leadership opportunities with the student organizations and the service learning with some of the largest philanthropy projects, student driven and student led um, in the nation. With that service learning, you can take any number of roles that you wanna be. If you wanna be the, the behind the scenes or if you wanna be out there doing all the radio ads and, and publicity and social media pushes, you can do that. You have that opportunity. And being involved in research from day one, you know, you can you can engage in that and get to travel with those professors that you're getting that research on and get your name potentially on research projects um, as we present. Even in a virtual environment, our students are getting to present at the conferences um, through Zoom and through other interactions and just networking continually with professional organizations and um, local ones as well. Internships, we've had students do internships locally at local businesses in their field uh, of choice. And we've also had them do them nationally and also internationally. There are opportunities abounds for internships. It's a great way to really apply what you're learning in the classroom into real world. How do these issues and, and evolutions work? And especially now as we've gone virtual and internships and businesses are making those decisions and seeing how does this play out? How do we how do we handle this um, today? Because who knows what we have to see in the future. So very exciting times, but you get to be involved from day one. When it comes to our student life, you get to become an active engaged member of your collegiate community on and off campus. Across the state with our six campuses, you get to choose how to be engaged and they want to be engaged with you as well. Our communities are very supportive of our Buckeyes and the university um, life that we have. And being a member of these communities will stay with you well into your alumni years as you join that network of 550,000 strong alumni. The range of housing options at Columbus, including those learning communities and scholars themed communities, is just a great way to get to know people that have some similar interests. And also at the other five campuses, you have many on-campus and off-campus living options available to you. Uh, as far as academic organizations, anything from academic club to zoology club, you know, our students head up hundreds of activities and student organizations, some of them academic, some of them, you know, national professional organizations um, that you will continue to be a part of once you graduate. And if you don't see something in those hundreds of organizations that we have, you can start one up. You have that with two other friends and an advisor, and you too can start a student organization at that time but really getting to learn from people across the university and your fellow peers in your classroom is really just a great way to really learn and grow in your leadership and, and your understanding of, of just everything that works in the world. But Ohio State nurtures and encourages that leadership at a level you are interested in and that involvement that you want to be a part of the Buckeye family. And I think that's a great example what just Jennifer just referenced is how we also value how our student, students are learning, not just in the classroom, but from their peers around them. And I think one of the great things about Ohio State is that we are an international university where we are drawing students from all over the world, all over the country, and all over the state of Ohio. And they are bringing a vast variety of experiences, backgrounds, um, just different, different characteristics about themselves that is a, 
is a wonderful way for our students to learn. Um, we really are passionate and are uh, very committed to creating global citizens. And what a better way to learn about people who are different from you, who have different backgrounds, who may be studying something very different from you um, than right here on our campuses. Um, and we really value diversity, not only of our students, but it's also part of our admissions process as well in many ways, um, because we are really, um, again, truly developing students for that global citizen, citizenship. Um, amongst our campuses, we have a variety of offices um, and different organizations that promote and uh, diversity on our campuses, whether it's the multicultural centers um, or the Office of Diversity and Inclusion, who may host different events on campus, or speakers and workshops. And again, just really bringing a vast uh, a vast group of students together to learn and engage with one another. Um, and I think that's one of the great examples of our campuses. Not only do we uh, provide you lots of opportunities and many things for you to get involved with, but many ways for you to be engaged with different students from all over the world on our campuses. Now, I think one of the best ways that we demonstrate our commitment to diversity is through the Moral Scholarship Program. The Moral Scholarship Program website is listed right there at the bottom. So again, if you want to do a little extra research on that, I encourage you to do so. But the Moral Scholarship Program is is truly one of the premier diversity and inclusion scholarships in the country. Um, we're really looking for students who in their high school or in their community have been actively engaged in diversity and inclusion issues, who have really been actively engaged in social justice initiatives, and who want to continue that work on our campus. Um, because while the while part of this program is a scholarship, and, and I never want to gloss over that part because that's a nice component as well, uh, because it can cover the full cost of your tuition, um, and for some students, your full cost of attendance. Um, but truly, it's the program that we like to highlight because we want to, to have the leaders from their high schools and their communities come and continue that great work on our campus. So students who are in the Moral Scholarship Program have the opportunity to live together in a learning community. Um, they also have the opportunity to move to campus a little bit early uh, to get engaged with other students um, and to just feel comfortable with navigating campus and understanding where they need to go. Um, there are also some classes towards leadership that are offered. Uh, we also offer travel opportunities as well. Um, about a year ago, we sent a group of about 40 students to Chicago where they worked with uh, local government officials and community-based organizations to learn about poverty and food insecurity um, and volunteered their time. And so again, we're really looking for those leaders, not only um, who've done the work in their high school and community, but who want to continue that on our campus and, and to really live that out. And our moral scholars are some of the best leaders on our campus as well. So similar though to honors and scholars, if you'd like to be cons considered for the Moral Scholarship Program, you have to tell us that on the application. You will indicate that you would like to be considered for the Moral Scholarship Program and write an additional essay. So again, a little bit of work, a little extra work for honors and scholars and MSP, but two wonderful, fantastic programs that students can take advantage of. Please note, you can be both. You can be an honors and scholar student and a moral scholar. Uh, we, we, I get that question a lot. And I think about 70 or 80% of students are in both groups. So you are not limited to what you can experience at Ohio State. Now let's talk a little bit about the application process. Um, to apply to the Columbus campus, you first must complete the common application. That is the only way to apply. There is a $60 fee for domestic students and a $70 fee for international students. Um, you will work with your school counselor to have your official high school transcript sent to us. And we ask that that include your senior schedule, so the classes you're currently taking. For this year, those of you who are seniors, we have gone test optional, meaning that we are not requiring an ACT or an SAT test score. We know that COVID has created so many challenges for testing, um, and we don't want that to be a barrier. Um, so please note that not only though are we test optional for admissions, but we also are for our merit scholarships, um, the Honors and Scholars Program, the Moral Scholarship Program, and some of our uh, competitive academic programs as well. So truly test optional. Um, again, we don't want that to be a barrier for students. Letters of recommendation are also optional, but you are certainly welcome to send them. 
Um, as someone who reads applications, I would say probably 95% of the applications I read have at least one letter of recommendation. And please note that if you send those, that will be included in your application materials and be part of our review. And I should say that the Columbus campus does a selective holistic admissions review of your application. Um, when we look at your, uh, all of your application materials, those interrelated pieces, we're, we're really doing a holistic review of all of the information that's been sent to us. So not only is it how have you performed in your high school through your GPA or class rank, or how you've performed on a test score, if you've sent that to us, but also the, the type of classes you take and the rigor, um, the leadership and activities you've been involved with, the essay that you share. So all of that goes into our admissions review. So again, looking at a holistic review of your application. So one question I often get is, What's the minimum ACT score I need? Or what's the minimum GPA? And there truly is none because we're looking at all of those interrelated items to make a decision. Now, I do wanna share with you some very important deadlines, um, including our early action deadline of November 15th, which is coming up here in just a few weeks. And I know that that seems like you've got plenty of time, but um, it, that, all, that deadline always gets a, approaches quickly. So I encourage you to um, make, meet that deadline as, as best as you can. I should also say it is a completion deadline. So in order to be considered early action, we need to have all of your materials on file to review. Now, early action at Ohio State is important for a few reasons. First, first off, it is, the, it is our merit scholarship deadline. So if you would like to be considered for any merit scholarships, you must meet that deadline. Our merit scholarships are competitive. Um, and so you want to make sure that um, if you would like to be considered for those, you meet that deadline. We will also give priority consideration for students who uh, are interested in the honors and scholars program, the moral scholarship program, or any majors within the College of Engineering. Engineering at Ohio State is quite popular and that class tends to fill early. Um, so again, meeting that early action deadline will give you some priority consideration. Um, and really we encourage students to meet that just because not only um, does it allow you to ensure that you're, you're considered for all of those extra things you might be interested in, but it also ensures that you will have a decision by the end of January. Now we do have a regular decision deadline of February 1st. That also coincides with our FAFSA deadline as well as our special scholarship application. And that special scholarship application is a grouping of scholarships, think of donor scholarships or program or college scholarships that we allow students to also apply for. Some of the out of uh, admissions, not, not through the admissions office, but other entities on campus. Jennifer, you wanna talk about the regional campus admissions process? Jennifer, you, you're muted. Well, thank you, Tracy. I thought I had taken that off. Uh, for the regional campus application, you have the option when you apply via common application to select a Ohio regional campus if you are a resident of the state of Ohio. So please feel free to put a second choice down that does not impact your admission decision at all for the Columbus campus uh, for that. If you're applying directly to a regional campus, you have the online application. It is separate from the common application. You will also need your high school transcripts with senior schedule to be submitted by your high school electronically. And then if you do have ACT or SAT scores, you know, they're optional to send. Um, they do not affect your admission decision, but it is helpful when it comes to orientation. Overall deadlines, please meet the February 1st deadline. Um, of course, we can apply after February 1st, but you want to meet that February 1st deadline for financial aid. For financial aid and scholarships on the regional campuses, you want to meet that. So please uh, take that into consideration as you're looking at deadlines. Here you see a map of where all of the campuses are for Ohio State University. You can check out this website here and find the links for all of them. Um, each campus is very unique and special experiences and offerings. Uh, but what is consistent is the academic rigor. It is the exact same class that is going to be handled across the state and also the spirit of the Buckeyes. Your diploma will say the Ohio State University on it, regardless of where you're graduating. Each campus has 12 to 15 degree programs you can complete on their campus. So please check out their individual websites to see exactly which completion degrees they have on their programs. 
but you can also start any of those 200 plus majors, or you can also double major uh, with any of the majors within The Ohio State University. So you'll work with your advisor to chart your four-year plan. Our newest program that we're very excited at the regional campuses is our Biology of Science and Engineering Technology. This program is through the College of Engineering, and it really answers a call from Ohio's manufacturing industry. It is a systems approach to management, incorporating business practices with engineering know-how and also integrating science. It is only to be completed on the regional campuses and students are matched with industry mentors their first year to gain firsthand experience in their industries. Now, when it comes to also these programs, there is a cost. And right here, I would recommend that website at the bottom of the slide uh, to look at how the costs play across campuses. Here you have for the Columbus campus direct costs for tuition and fees and room and board because you uh, will be living on campus that first two, one to two years after high school. The regional campuses, we list the tuition and fees here because every regional campus is different with what their regional uh, room and board costs will be depending on their campus. Indirect costs, these are really those additional costs that you have of what it takes for that year while you're while you're working on your degree. So maybe books, it's going to be transportation. That's why you see the cost of indirect costs is a little bit higher on the regional campuses because more of our students are commuting to and from campus typically um, and any other personal expenses you may have. For a full list of those, that undergrad.osu.edu forward slash costs will give you a breakdown of additional costs you may uh, be considering as you are looking at your school budget. And like Jennifer mentioned earlier, meeting that February 1st deadline for the regional campuses um, is important for a few things because of the scholarship opportunities that exist. Um, and one scholarship opportunity I want to highlight is the Alumni Scholarship Program uh, that is outside of the admissions office, but something we certainly are encouraging students who are applying to the university to truly take advantage of. Um, as Jennifer mentioned, we have over 500,000 living alums um, and they're active and passionate um, and, and many have started their own chapters and their own clubs, as well as their own scholarship programs for prospective students. And so beginning on November 1st, the alumni scholarship application will open and students are able to apply and you're, will be reviewed very similar to the admissions process from your academic performance to your involvement in your high school and community, um, where you're coming from in the state and things like that. So again, this is just a resource for you to apply for some additional funds. Um, when you look at the breakdown for the Columbus and the regional campuses, our goal is truly to make Ohio State accessible and affordable, particular to, particularly to our Ohio residents. So not only do we want to look at controlling those costs, but provide you ways to find additional funds and scholarship opportunities um, and to work with our financial aid office and our admissions offices to see what other uh, scholarship opportunities or need-based aid opportunities exist. The website for the Alumni Scholarship Program is listed here. So again, encourage you to take advantage of that. Right. Now, as we're coming to you virtually um, through, this, through this college fair, where typically we would be standing behind a table and passing out lots of brochures and having you fill out a card so we could get to know you, uh, we obviously are unable to do that right now. And so we're, we're meeting you through Zoom. But um, we're doing that because, because we are not hosting right now any visitors to our campus th campuses through the rest of this year. However, with that being said, uh, we have created a variety of ways for you to engage and to learn more about our campuses. Um, not only are we providing online admissions overviews and current student panels and some guided tours, um, but many of our academic units are providing some uh, of their own sessions. Um, and we have some great videos. Um, I know on the regional campus uh, websites, they have some how-tos in completing their application or some great 360 uh, views of their, many of which who have apartment style housing. So lots of great ways for you to learn more about Ohio State until hopefully early next year, we can start um, welcoming visitors to campus um, if, if that is that possibility presents itself. Jennifer, do you wanna add anything else about the regional campus? Virtual engagement. Sure. 
for our visits virtually. We almost all have those campus tours listed on our websites and just really a great way to get started when looking at those campuses and feel free to call and reach out to any of our campuses to just have a conversation with them. Uh, with any of our virtual events, we all have current students that will be on panels and just be able to give you firsthand experiences of what it's like to be on that campus. And it's just always great to hear the stories of fellow Buckeyes of why they chose Ohio State, why they chose the campuses that they did. And the great segue, Jennifer, to how you can connect with our admissions and financial aid office. Um, the emails and website that websites that are listed here, emails and phone numbers, I should say, that are listed here will direct you to the Columbus campus. However, if you are looking to speak with one of our regional campus contacts, um, our Buckeye Link staff can certainly connect you with those folks. So please know that you can always start with Columbus, but be directed to any of the regional campuses of your choice. Um, so please contact us, as Jennifer said, we want to, especially in this time where we can't meet with students personally or welcome you to campus, um, where you might be able to engage with a current student in person, we certainly want to be a resource for you as you're navigating the application process and understanding the dates and deadlines and all of those requirements. All right, I think that brings us to the end of our presentation. And this last slide is always very uh, long to load, I think, because there's lots of pictures on it. Um, but at this point, I'm going to turn, there we go. I'm going to turn it over to Mark to see if there are any questions that Jennifer and I can address, if there's anything that's come in. And please, um, students who are who are with us right now, feel free to use that Q&A feature right now, and we can answer some more of those questions. Thanks, Tracy. Thanks, Jennifer. Really good information that you shared this evening with our prospective Buckeyes. The first question is from Braden, and Braden is asking if a student applies to the Columbus campus and is not accepted, is there still time to apply to a regional campus? There is, Braden. This is a great question and something I forgot to mention. If you are a, res a resident of Ohio and you graduate from an Ohio accredited high school, then you are going to option to a regional campus. If you do not select one on the Common App as a second choice, then you will certainly be admitted to the Ohio State Regional Campus closest to where you live. Um, so either way, you know, you are covered. Please do not submit a second application. If ever in doubt, and this is anything along the application process, uh, please make sure to reach out to us because we are very able to help navigate the application process for you, but also uh, make sure that you know, you're, you're covered with that application. Thanks, Jennifer. Another next question, uh, maybe is a quick question for you, Jennifer. How many OSU campuses are there? All together, there are six with um, the Columbus campus as well. So we really cover all parts of the state to just, southern, just slightly um, southern to Columbus, but also up in the Northeast and Northwest as well. Great. Tracy, this next question is for you. Jordan's asking, uh, that they took the SAT last March and had college boards send the results directly to OSU. They have not had a chance to retake the exam due to closed locations and canceled exams. If they decide to opt out or apply test optional to Ohio State, but SAT already sent their score for March, how is that going to be considered? That's a great question and a lot of questions that we get about test optional this year. Um, it's, it's new for many colleges and universities that we, as we've shifted some of our policies. Uh, but please note that if when you're completing the common application to Ohio State, there is a specific question that asks if you would like to have your test scores used in your admissions review or if you would not like to have those used in your review. And based off of what you select on the common application will be what we do in our review process. So while we may have your SAT scores on file, if you select that you would like to be test optional and not have that part of your admissions review, we will not use that, a that SAT or ACT test score, even if they've already been sent to us. Um, we won't have that as part of our uh, review site um, as we're reviewing applications. So you really do get to determine how and if your test scores are used in our admissions review. Tracy, piggybacking off of that question, is Ohio State test optional for 2021 applicants only? 
As of right now, we are currently test optional for those, those of you who are current seniors who will be applying for the fall of next year, so fall of 2021. Now, I know that there, are, there may be juniors and sophomores on this presentation as well and, and wondering about what that may look like moving forward. Um, and we know that there are still continuing to be uh, testing issues uh, throughout the state and throughout the country. But as of right now, uh, our testing test optional policy is just for this year, but certainly we'll want to monitor our website or any communication that we send out if we make any adjustments for years moving forward because of COVID-19. Thanks, Tracy. Jennifer, I'm gonna uh, throw the next question over to you. And the question is, how can students, or are students able to double minor with one of their majors on our campuses? They sure can, Mark. Uh, you know, as you're going through your programs, you may decide you have some other interests or you already have coming in that you want to um, add a different, another area to your program. You can certainly do that. Talk with your advisor right away because there may be classes that overlap in the programs and you wanna make sure that you take those at the right time. Um, so definitely make sure that you look into those. Majors.osu.edu is a great resource to look at all of the majors and the way specializations or minors uh, would also work in that. Next up, I think I'm gonna ask this question of both of you. And that question is on the Columbus campus and on the Mansfield campus, are there favorite areas of campus that you like to be on or that students like to spend their time at? Well, so I'll say, I'll, I will say there are two for me, um, and one is dependent upon the weather. <laughs> um, so I love being in the Oval um, when it's sunny and warm, um, or now with the, when the fall weather is here and we get to see the change of the leaves. But it's such a, um, just I think such a, a, a true college campus feel in the Oval. It's just such sort of that traditional, when you think of a college experience, the Oval for me really represents it. Um, but I'll also say um, I love being in Thompson Library and the Grand Reading Room, and it, it kind of reminds me of, of Harry Potter. Um, so uh, those are two of my favorite places um, because they just really um, are areas not only that, again, give you that college campus feel, but students are there. They're, they're actively um, out and about, taking advantage of the resources, taking advantage of the Oval. It's, it's just a great uh, feel in both of those areas. Sure, for Mansfield campus, I just really love our wetlands. We have 640 acres of beauty of campus there, but they really become a teaching classroom as well. And it's so neat to look outside my office and see deer or see pheasants run by, but also see students out there doing their ecology classes or biology classes. And it just makes for such a neat experience. And we actually have Ohio State maple syrup this past year from uh, research we've we've been doing and so now we're able to purchase that and I don't know if I'll let you eat it because I love the bottle so much you know I want to keep that bottle um, at the Columbus campus I love the union there is just so much tradition and I almost start playing a game of mind of how many O's are everywhere because it's just amazing how um, Carmen Ohio is echoed throughout and no matter where you're at, you're seeing students engaging with each other and studying and it's and it's just a perfect setting. Um, and it's just awe-inspiring and you have to take a picture with Brutus, with the bronze Brutus. So we do that every time too. Thank you both. Looks like we have a follow-up to the SAT question. And Tracy, that question is if they end up uh, having the opportunity to test after they've submitted their application, and they've already selected that they don't want to have their test scores considered, that they want to be test optional. Can they still have those scores be considered? We actually are really going to use the application to determine what we will do with your test scores. So if you have already submitted your test scores, uh, we will go with that decision. Um, from an from a admissions review standpoint, in a timeliness where again, we're looking to get our early action applicants complete and have decisions by the end of January. Um, we will really be using what you post on the application when you submit that and using the test. So in that case, um, we would not accept those test scores. Um, and again, with the November 15th completion deadline, we also wanna be mindful that you're meeting that completion as well, that deadline. Great, thanks, Tracy. 
And Barry, I'm going to have to ask you if you can rephrase your question. I'm not, I was intentionally skipping that one because I'm not sure if you're asking what the favorite game is that they've ever been to or the best game. Um, but if you can also specify the athletic event, because we have a number, dozens of athletic teams on our campuses. So I'll give you an opportunity to rephrase that one more time for me, and I'm happy to ask that question. Uh, the next question, uh, can you share a residence hall, uh, residence hall room, and how many people can be in that residence hall room? I think we both can answer this because they're going to be very different in, <laughs> in the, the option. Um, on the Columbus campus, there are actually 38 different residence halls that uh, students can um, uh, choose from. Um, and, and the reality is, is that the, the living uh, environment, it can be very different. It can range. Some students may live with one other person. Some may live with four other, three other people for a total of four in one room. There may be a suite type setting where maybe there are eight students. So it really varies. Um, the housing website at Ohio State is a great resource because not only does it show you the breakdown and the differences, um, it also gives you the layout, again, a 360 view. Um, so again, a wide variety of options um, because on the Columbus campus, we have uh, 14 to 15,000 students tip in a typical year living on campus. So again, a wide variety of options and availability for students. Jennifer, do you wanna talk about housing on the regional campuses? I sure can. Newark, Mansfield, and ATI Worcester have university housing on their campuses. And what you can do is, uh, you know, when you fill out your contracts, you can put down who you would like to live with. And we always recommend you put them, um, you have each other submitted around the same time. So it just lines up better. Um, and so you can select um, in that way who you would like to live with. Uh, but again, you just need to make sure that you are in contact with that friend <laughs> that you want to live with and talk with them about it. Um, and just meet the deadlines. As with anything throughout this process, just make sure that you are uh, meeting those deadlines as, um, in every way that you can. Great. The next two questions are also related to living on campus. The first one is coming in from Abby, and that one is, does being a commuter student or choosing to live on campus have any impact on the selection to the Columbus campus? So, Tracy, can you maybe talk about who we allow to commute to the Columbus campus? Yeah, absolutely. So students are able to commute to the Columbus campus if they live within a 25, 30 mile radius of our campus. Otherwise, we do require students to live on campus for two years. From an admissions perspective though, um, that is not part of our admissions review, whether you would be on campus or you would, or if you would be a commuter student, that's, that's not part of our review. But we do have a lot of great resources for commuter students. And so um, if you are a commuter student and are admitted to the university, we will share a lot of that. Our, our first year experience program will share a lot of the different resources that commuter students have access to so that while you may not be living in a residence hall, you still are getting the resources and the support um, and getting the connections you need to be successful and still learning all about campus. Even if you're going to be going home in the evenings from classes, we still want to make sure that obviously you're successful, but no impact on your admissions decision if you are eligible to be a commuter student. Thanks, Tracy. And do you get to choose where you stay and how many people you room with? Um, well, we, when you complete your housing contract on the Columbus campus, um, we actually um, ask you to give your best preferences and your locations of campus. So no, often not a specific residence hall. Um, again, now if you're in a special program like honors or the scholars program, um, or if you're interested in a specific learning community that has specific locations, that may determine where you live and the, and the setup and the roommates that you have or the number of roommates, I should say. But in general, we're asking students to give their best preferences and recommendations. And then our housing department does the best uh, they can to really match you in those, um, those uh, reference or rec recommendations that you've requested, um, whether it's the location of campus, the number of students. And as Jennifer referenced, if you have another 
person that you would like to room with, um, as long as you both are putting that down, both are putting each other's name down in the contract and submitting about the same time, um, our housing office does a pretty good job of matching students with uh, their roommate preferences as well. Great, thank you. I'm gonna jump back to a question that was submitted previous, previously and we now have some clarification on. Uh, what is the best sports game that either of you have have ever been to. Now, I need to give a little note to Jennifer. Jennifer is uh, from Nebraska. And so I think she had a hard time this weekend, everybody. Uh, and so just one quick note there, but I'll turn it over to, to answer well, that Mark, question. I'm glad I, I got to listen to the game. I'm probably happy I was not there at the game, but I know um, while I've been to a few different sports, I know the one I want to attend is synchronized swimming as they have the most national champions um, championships for Ohio State. And I cannot wait to go to one of their performances and just see um, what they do, make the, see the magic that they create. Um, my favorite experience, actually, the irony is that it was uh, uh, a football game against Nebraska on a Saturday night under the light several years ago. Um, uh, it was just a very cool experience. Um, uh, like I said, an evening game in the horseshoe, 105,000, 110,000 people. Um, it, was, it was just a great experience. And and I would just say to Jennifer's point to, to go watch synchronized swimming or any of the other athletic teams uh, perform. I think that's just a great example of the tradition and the community and the school spirit that we have, um, whether it is 110,000 people in the horseshoe or maybe just a few several hundred at some of the smaller uh, events. Um, you know, the, I think the school spirit and the pride and the tradition is there at all of those. So uh, I don't, you can't go wrong. I think, I think you're gonna get that same um, energy uh, in all of the athletic events. Well, thank you, Tracy and Jennifer. We appreciate your responses. I'm gonna to to answer a, a couple of last minute questions uh, just by typing those out, but I know we are right at our time. So I'll turn it back over to you, Tracy, and then I'll look to you to turn it over to our facilitator. All right. Well, thanks again for everyone joining us tonight. Thank you to Jennifer. Thank you to Mark um, in our presentation. Um, we're so glad you're able to join us. Um, if you please use us as resources, we certainly want to be there for you. Um, I'm going to turn it back over to Hannah, uh, but as always, go Buckeyes. All right, y'all. Thank you so much to The Ohio State University for presenting for us today. Let's see if my PowerPoint will work. Here we go. Thank you for so much for joining us. I do just want to say, Jennifer, I am also from Nebraska. Um, so I was watching with you. Um, not, not super excited on my end, but... <laughs> Um, anyway, back to ending the presentation. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, when you close the window, there will be a link to a very, very quick survey. It's just four seconds, or four seconds, four questions. Um, and we'd appreciate any feedback that you have for us. And then also, again, this is just one of many sessions that we are offering. So please do not hesitate to log on to oacac.org and see what other sessions are available. We'd love to have you join us for some others. And then finally, there will be a recording available of this presentation in about a week on oacac.org. And that's what all I have for y'all. So thanks so much for joining us today to learn more about The Ohio State University and have a great rest of your night. Thanks, y'all. <laughs>